It was October 1918. The Great War had been raging on for four long years. The German army was retreating through France and decided to make a stand in the last major French city still under their control. This is the story of Thomas Poitras, a proud Métis Canadian. Thomas Poitras was born in the Peace River country in 1898. He grew up here and farmed in Black Cardinal area, Bear Lake, which is pretty much where he was when he was uh, conscripted under the Military Service Act of Canada in 1917. By the end of the war, volunteering had nearly dried up. Prime Minister Robert Borden was determined that Canada needed to play a significant role in the war. In 1917, he passed the Military Service Act. This controversial law allowed for the conscription of Canadian men to serve in the final years of the war. As a young Métis soldier, he was took training here in Canada and then left from Halifax for Liverpool, I believe, where he got further training in Bramshot military camp there, prior to being sent over to France. This letter was handed down from my grandmother to my mother and down to us. So this is a letter that, um, that he wrote once he got to England before he went to France. Dear Father, I'm writing you a few, a few lines to say that I am well, hoping you out there the same. I am now in this camp where the rest of the boys are. I received two letters a week ago, one from Adolphus and another from my Aunt Maria. I was very glad to hear from them. I met Hart Watson here yesterday. I was very glad to see him. I had no time to talk to him yet. Well, dear Father, I did not receive anything from you yet. And how is Mother getting along? I heard she was very lonesome. Well, I guess I'll close my letter for the time saying goodbye. Your son, Private Tom Poitras, 21st Reserve Battalion, 4100790, Bramshot Camp. Please write as soon as possible. Most of the troops had been spending time in the trenches. However, by this time, the Germans were retreating, so by the time he arrived, they were already out, so there would have been very little trench work, which was probably good for him, because it was pretty brutal in those trenches. The plan was to take Mount Hoy, a fortified hill overlooking the city. From there, backed by artillery fire, the Canadian and British battalions would take the city. It took three days of hard fighting to reach Valenciennes. By the time they were ready to take the city, the Canadian 47th and 44th Battalions were forced to take over the British lines. The success of the mission was on Canada's shoulders. On November 1st, 1918, the Canadian 44th Battalion took Mount Hoy in under 45 minutes. By 10.20 a.m., the 47th Battalion began invading the city. Despite being outnumbered two or three to one, the Canadians had taken the heart of the city by noon. The Battle of Valenciennes is one of Canada's greatest victories and was one of the only examples of urban combat in the Great War. It was during the Battle of Valenciennes that Thomas was wounded by being shot in the neck and shoulder area 10 days before armistice was declared. Thomas Poitras was saved by his fellow soldiers on the battlefield and spent some time in a field hospital where he seemed to be recovering. He was later transferred to a military hospital in Cannes where he tragically passed away on December 8th, 28 days after the war was over. Private Thomas Poitras, 1898 to 1918, a true Canadian Métis hero.